Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we will take a look how we can make portrait photos more moody and dramatic by playing with light. We are going to apply the triangle of Rembrandt in combination with the Rembrandt lightning to give the portrait a touch of mystique. Before we start, let's have a look on an example with the before and the after. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So what is the Rembrandt lightning and the triangle of Rembrandt? It comes from the famous Dutch Baroque painter Rembrandt, who's most famous for his night watch painting. In a lot of paintings he applied a single light source, mostly coming from the top left, which fully illuminates the left, while on the other part a dark shadow is being cast because of the projecting nose also resulting in a triangle of light just under the eyes, which is known as the Triangle of Rembrandt. This triangle is mostly the finishing touch and gives that extra drama to the portrait. As we see with the other example paintings, the face is always divided in two, a lit and a dark area. As a rule of thumb, the triangle of light should not be wider than the eye and longer than the nose. Now let's apply this knowledge to portrait photos. So here is the image I showed at the beginning of the video. Let's go through the steps one by one. Before applying these steps, let me first explain what we are going to do. First we will try to cast a shadow on the right part of the face and once we have that, we will try to recreate the triangle of Rembrandt just below the eye and make sure it all blends naturally. So let's get started. I'll start by removing the current adjustments and making a duplicate of the image for comparison later. The idea is now to add shadows to the right side of the face. There are many ways of doing this. In this example, I'll be using a curves layer and adjust the curve to make the image darker. As we only want this to apply to the right part of the face, we are going to add a mask. By the way, you don't need to add a mask, as the adjustment layers already come with a built-in mask. But I like to have a separate mask for better visibility in the layers panel, so we can see it has been masked out very quickly. I'm going to invert the current mask. I can do this by using the command I shortcut or just use the menu. Now that our mask is inverted, the adjustment is not applied, but we can paint in with a white brush to add the effect on the areas we want, which will be the right side of the face. Just make sure your flow is around 10% as this gives a more natural result when painting back the effect. This looks about right. I can always go into the curves adjustment layer and modify the strength of the effect. Next, I'm going to duplicate the curves adjustment and put its blend mode to divide. By setting the blend mode to divide, the areas we just masked will become super bright. By using the opacity, we can control the curves layer below. I also want to adjust the blend range of it so it will only apply to the lighter areas below. However, as you can see, the changes in the blend range have no effect. I don't know if this is a bug or not, but we can work around it by grouping the adjustment and then modifying the blend range of the group. As you see, this is working. I'll adjust the blend range of it so the brightness only applies to the lighter areas. This will give the image a much natural look. I can still change the opacity of the curves adjustment in the group to really fine tune the effect. If I turn on and off, you can see it makes that subtle difference to make it look more natural. We can continue fine tuning by adjusting the curves layer below. For example, we can modify the opacity 
and even change the curve. As I want the shadow effect to be stronger, I will modify the curve. It is a bit too harsh again, and to make it look more natural again, I'm going to modify the opacities of the group and the curves adjustment in the group above. Excellent! Let's have a look at the before and the after. Pretty cool! Just by adding the shadows to the face, we got already a very interesting look. I do feel that the right eye is a bit too dark. We can easily fix this by masking it out on the lowest curves adjustment, which is responsible for the darken effect. Let's have another look at the before and the after. I feel now that we lost too much detail in the hair with the darken effect, so I'm going to use a grey color and paint on the mask of the darken curve so we can get some details back. Perfect! Time for the triangle of Rembrandt. I can use a triangle tool and draw a triangle just below the eye. Let's reposition the triangle so it will match the light source coming from the top left. We assume the light coming from the left is white, so it would make sense to change the color of the triangle to white. Two more steps. First, I will change the blend mode of it to soft light, so it blends in naturally. And second, we need to add a blur filter, and we can do this by adding a Gaussian light filter. Let's increase the radius until we get a nice looking blend. To finish up the triangle of Rembrandt, we need to fine tune it so it will look more natural. I can adjust the size and the position. Once I'm happy with that, I can modify the blur radius. As a final fine tuning adjustment, we can also add an HSL adjustment to the triangle and modify the lightness of it. Or I can change the triangle color by sampling a color from the skin and with the HSL adjustment I can really fine tune the color and the lightness so it fits with the rest of the image. A final look at the before and the after. Pretty amazing! Time to apply it to another image using a different method. Here is the before and here is the after. Quite a difference. As you might notice, it brings more attention to the face of the subject. So let's start again by removing all the current layers. Now, instead of using a curves layer to darken one side of the image, I'm going to use the lightning filter. Let's set it up so the line comes from the top right. Perfect. To make things a little bit easier, I will move the lightning layer on top of the image. As I don't want this to be too dramatic, I will change the blend mode to soft light and modify the blend rate so the effect is a little bit dimmed down. Now, let's duplicate it. On the duplicate, I'm going to change the blend mode to screen and change the blend range so it will not affect the bright areas. Pretty awesome! We increased the liveliness in the face already. The effect of both of these layers is a bit too much, so let's dim it by modifying the opacity. I think I can also lower the opacity of the screen version a little bit more. Nice! Time to add the triangle of Rembrandt. This time I will just add a pixel layer and paint the triangle by hand using the paintbrush tool. Just as before, I will add a Gaussian light filter and set the blend mode of this layer to soft light. A little bit of adjustments in size and position and maybe to make the effect of the triangle a bit stronger for this image, I will use the overlay blend mode. When I use the overlay blend mode, 
I will definitely need to lower its opacity as the effect would be otherwise too strong. Ok, we got the basics ready. Time to have a quick look at where we started from and start fine tuning it. First thing I need to do is to make the shadows on the face stronger. I can do that by adjusting the lowest lightning adjustment and playing with its opacity. Optionally, I can also modify the opacity of the lightning layer above to control more of the highlights. To finish up, I'm going to add a curves layer to darken the image. As the light is coming from the right, I'm going to mask this out in the curves layer by painting with black. Awesome! For a final touch, I'm going to add another curves layer, but this time it will brighten things up. I will use the command I shortcut to invert its mask. Now, with a big soft white brush, I'm going to tap just above the left shoulder. This will give the idea that the light bounces off from the wall behind the subject. If I turn on and off this layer, you can see what I mean. It just gives that extra depth to the image. Let's have a look at the before, which was quite flat, and the after, so much more interesting. Before leaving you, let me share another image with you and see how the triangle of Rembrandt can even be applied to retouched images. This image in itself is astonishing already. But let me enable the Rembrandt layers and see how much drama this added. Pretty amazing, isn't it? You can really play with the lightning layers, the triangle size and try different blend modes to get different results. Which is by the way, as you notice, I'm doing in super speed. Here is the result of the modifications compared to the initial end result. Just by adjusting the layers, it has become more softer and more natural. As you see, applying the triangle of Rembrandt is just an amazing way to get that extra depth and drama to your photos. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, now is a good time to do so for more interesting Affinity Photo tutorials. Thanks again for watching, keep safe and keep being creative. Until the next video.